Hi and welcome to Tabletop Gaming, my name is Charlie and today we're taking a look at a review that originally appeared in Tabletop Gaming magazine. It was written by Chris Eggett and it is for Apothecaria. So without further ado, let's leap right in. Usually I have no interest in being a vole or a stoat or any woodland creature. And yet here, my begrudgingly helpful hedgehog has left the forest a better place. Based on Blackwell's previous solitaire potion-making game, Apothecaria, Apothecaria takes the leap into Brian Tyrrell's world of critters writing prescriptions. Players take the role of an animal whose goal is to heal the ailing in the woodlands, usually by collecting roots, flowers, and leaves, and then creating a concoction as treatment. It's a journaling game that directs players to reflect on their experiences through the woodlands, and beyond that there are many biomes, interacting with various creatures and situations as dictated by the book. All of the randomness is dealt by drawing from a deck of cards, whether that's foraging, draw a number higher than the rarity, or creating an encounter, just using the number and suit from the card. The book is key here. The Almanac, a section of the book dedicated to the plant's treatments and processes, required as your job of GP of the undergrowth, sets it apart from other journaling games. Often journaling games feel like you should be creating either a workable piece of fiction or the lore for some future adventure. Here, you're making notes. Real notes that you'll find useful for playing the game. Soon, you're flicking through the almanac like it's a useful gardening book, noting down that you need garden mint and lavender, along with where they can be found and how rare they are. I scribbled these into my own journal, an unused diary, useful for tracking time in the game, alongside the prompt responses and note about the notoriety of the guild, what I was carrying, and so on. It flowed because the book is part of the game. It's a key prop, and one of the pleasures is simply understanding what you're looking for. There's none of the sense of returning to the rule book, because the book that happens to be the rules is also the thing you need to flick through to find out wild violet leaves are good for curing the sense keyword. Soon you're working out from the almanac contents what you think might be around you in this season, and it's kind of a productive guessing game. Of course, you're against the clock, you can't leave a squirrel with a headache for too long after all, and you might not forage what you need, and the inhabitants nearby might not want to barter in a friendly way. Plus there is, and forgive me for saying this, a fun inventory management. You need to think about what you're going to keep into your bag for longer trips and later into the year or overloading yourself. And beyond the fact that this is so immersive is that it naturally draws out short, tender interactions without being wishy-washy. There's something in the fact that ailments can be deadly and dire that makes the work in this game a little more gallows humour than soft focus feeling fests. A perfectly pitched solo adventure that might give you pause for thought. Should you play it? Well, we gave this rating a must play. You absolutely should play this, with the conclusion that this is a deep game of exploration that will have you stopping to smell the flowers before picking them for parts and attempt to stave off the death of an ailing estrel. And we also said you should try this if you like The Wretched, because if you enjoyed the certain doom of this card-driven solo dying in space game, then helpfully averting the threats in the forest will be surprisingly similar, if a little more relaxed. Thank you so much for watching and for joining me today. I would love to hear your thoughts on Apothecaria if you have played it, or if you would like like to. If you have any questions as well, do pop those below. And if you want to be the first to read reviews such as this, you should absolutely check out Tabletop Gaming Magazine. I'll pop a link in the description so you can do just that. Whilst you're on the website, you can also find cool things like mystery boxes, advent calendars, and the like. There's plenty more news, reviews, features, everything you could possibly like. If you like tabletop games, if you like role-playing games, board games, card games, anything, there'll be something for you there. While you're here, don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.